good evening from England. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, hope you all are doing good and great. Happy Ramadan to all our Muslim community in the world uh, worldwide. Today, from Sanya Rahman and Soch, we organize a joint event. Uh, I should say it's a very, very special event because it's the Autism Awareness Month. And today we have someone who is actually very, very special, uh, especially for parents like me, like you, who are with us been long time. Uh, I, uh, I'm going to introduce our very special guest now for, with you all, Shannon Penrod. You all know her, Autism Life, who is uh, running this session last 10 years almost if I'm not wrong. Then we have Dr. Samnani, director and founder Soch, and we have Dr. Pallavi Patel, occupational therapist, a step to success from USA. Thank you so much, everyone, to join today with us. It's a very, very special event, uh, especially in this awareness month. Now I'm going to introduce with you Shannon Penrod. Shannon, if you just uh, could you please unmute your mic and um, introduce yourself with our audience. You know our most of our audience is from Bangladesh, India, Pakistan. So it will be like new thing for them to know you. It will be their adventure to invent uh, invent you. Here you go, Shannon. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for having me today. I'm so excited to be here. It's such a privilege to be with all of you. Uh, I am Shannon Penrod, and I am the very proud mom of a wonderful young man who was diagnosed with autism when he was two and a half. And we have had a very interesting journey. And through that journey, we made the decision that we would tell others about what we learned. And so years ago, first I had a radio show that was called Everyday Autism Miracles. And then 10 years ago, we started a program called Autism Live. And it is a free program for the world. And we, on the show, we feature experts who can answer questions in real time. And our whole mission with Autism Live is to provide information and inspiration. Everyone's journey is different, but our journey has been so amazing. And we've learned so much. My son is now about to be 18. And he went from being a nonverbal child where they were telling us not to have hope to in the fall, he will start college and he is completely verbal. He's actually going to college to be a screenwriter. So um, I owe so much to the autism community for helping us through our journey that Every day, I think to myself, how can I help others? Uh, and we do as much as we can through Autism Live and through other outreach. So to be here with you today and talk about that message of hope is very important and near to and dear to my heart, especially in this month of awareness and acceptance. I think it's very important that people understand that there there is so much that I love. What my friend Lisa Ackerman says, she says. Uh, when it's autism, it's not game over, it's game on. There's so much to do, so much you can do. So I, I'm excited to be here with you today to talk about all of that and to be here with such illustrious guests. So thank you. Thank you so much, Shannon. Uh, before we move to the next session, I would like to share a short clip of Shannon's journey with all our audience. shared it on the show but I was at a thing with my son and I was able my son was there with a bunch of neurotypical kids and there were uh, oh, yeah. two schools of, of kids that were there that were from an autism program one that was older kids and one that was the little itty bitty ones and my and it was during a 9-11 ceremony and my son was in the middle so I'm looking at my son and there's the flag and there are all these first responders there very emotional to see that right and then there would be these little noises and I would look off to the side with the kids who were old, my son's age and a little bit older and that have autism and have a more severe 
circumstance than my son has and the deep appreciation that I got for the fact that my son was standing the whole time. One of the hardest things in the world for him to stand still during a ceremony that's 40 minutes with nothing to lean on. That's like right in the you know category of where he would struggle. No behavior watching, paying attention the whole time. And I kept looking at him, looking at the flag, looking at him, then looking at the older kids and seeing where my child is opposed to these kids. And then the young ones would make a noise. And I would look over at the young ones and I would realize that half of the children and the young could be where my son is. Roughly half of them, statistically, if they get the right intervention at the right amount at the right time. And if they don't, they will all be standing in that other group. All of them will be. But half of them could be standing with my son, maybe more of them, but it depends on me and you, what do we do? Do we bring them and do we use the full hours with people like Dr. Nadowski? It's our choice. But let me tell you, I stood there and sobbed, sobbed in gratitude and fear for what if we don't, as a society, make sure that half of those kids stand with my son. It was so emotional for me, and I, but I was so grateful for people like you and to card because my son surely would have been standing with those other kids. I, I know that in the very core of my being, he had stood with those kids and he would be standing with the older kids. So for any parent who's watching, like that's the difference. Where do you want your son or daughter to be standing? And you've got to give it your all and it's going to be uncomfortable. All right. I'm going to make me cry already. This early in the morning. Uh, it's early where I am, I should say that. Um, it's still true. What I said, it's still true. I work on that every day to let people know. Um, now I uh, like to invite Dr. Samnani to sh share with uh, us why Soch and Sanya Rohman we jointly organize these types of session and what what is actually our goal to achieve with these types of joint events thank you dr samnani hi everyone i'm manish and i along with my wife malvika we run a center called soch in uh, gurgaon very near the capital city of the of this country india uh, and we we both of us have been uh, into a professional role into a clinical position uh, th since last uh, 21 years and throughout our work with children we realized that it is uh, it, it the circle of uh, changing uh, improving putting children back in, onto a functional gain is uh, is not complete unless the the entire family is getting involved where the child is no, not just the child is receiving uh, intervention or input but it, it, it is truly a therapeutic alliance uh, between the child, the therapist, and the parents. So we believe that this therapeutic alliance should grow, not just when the child comes to my center and receives intervention, but also it should grow to an extent where we understand the functional difficulties, the strengths of a child, which may not be possible when I am working with the child only as a, as a therapist or a clinician. I, under, I felt and also I received equally reciprocating inputs from parents whenever we tried to connect with them because it, it looked like that this was not just uh, not just uh, interaction that happens because we meet the child every I, I meet children every 24 hours because you know the intervention that we give are pretty intensive but i understood that when we meet parents it is also the parents who need to be connected to to make sure that the children and their lives are truly being touched upon uh, a lot of times clinicians may not understand what does an autism or any other developmental difficulty really mean to the child and to the family i think when we look from a clinician angle only, we look from a clinician angle only. And then it, it becomes a little incomplete. It does not, you know, in a way, give me the content that I did something that was really functional, useful, worthwhile for the family till I started connecting with parents. And in due course of time, 
uh, we started doing uh, certain training programs, workshops, and we realized that it is not just I giving ideas to the parents. I felt and I realized that I have learned a lot from parents. In fact, I have learned a lot from the children who come to us for therapy. They are the real teachers. They teach us by being there, by being what whatever they, they do or whatever they do not do or they have the challenge and the strength. They, they, they teach me a lot. They, they give me the ideas. They give me the path to, to follow when I want to work with them. And when I, when, uh, you know, theoretically, we, we, I, I read in the books a child centered approach, a family centered intervention. But it is actually only when I connect, network, collaborate, talk, uh, sit with parents that I really understand the meaning of those terms. And I also realized that this therapeutic alliance is something that needs to be rolled over. It needs to be snowballed so that more and more parents can understand that this is not a, this is not a service provider and a service receiver kind of relationship. It needs to snowball into something really beautiful, into something really very, very useful for, for, for all, all of us. Because like I said, as a professional, I have gained out of these interactions. Having said that, the vision that I have in my mind when I start connecting with other professionals uh, is, is about improving our own competencies, broadening our knowledge base, but also with parents in different roles. Uh, to be able to uh, really understand the world from their perspective, one and second, also to really you know set up some kind of a, a interactions, some kind of a connect that can be a a, a, a reason of just like Shannon said, I, and I I'm so happy. I yesterday or day before I was talking to Shazman, and I used the same word, and I said hope. I want to instill hope and resilience in children and in the professional community it is autism is a challenge not just for the parent it is equally big challenge for the professionals as well and my overall vision to connect with you to connect with your channel to connect with shannon is to actually create a sense of hope a sense of resilience in many many parents and professionals so that's that's what what my intention is Thank you so much, sir, for saying so many important um, things to, um, to us. Uh, my point of view as a parent, after me, for our kids, that's the professionals who actually loves our kids. So if I think, uh, to whom shall I make my bonding strong? That's our professionals. And because of Dr. Shanani, to be honest, I'm not uh, like um, saying something, uh, people is, oh, you're just saying because Dr. Samran is here. No, because I had a world like I just know only what England has, what the system I live in the country. But there is a world where you can have lots of resources for your children. But uh, when I met Dr. Samrani, I just find, uh, found my daughter is different way because the way he and he assessed my daughter. I, 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 f I found my daughter is like, oh, why I didn't meet Dr. Samrani uh, seven years ago? So that's my feelings. Uh, that's my, uh, I should say my respect. I'm, I am just blessed to meet, uh, meet Dr. Samrani and having this opportunity to share, to doing these uh, important sessions. He gave me this opportunity. Now I uh, introduce our uh, honorable guest, Dr. Pallavi Patel. Uh, Dr. Pallavi Patel is the first time in our live session. And Dr. Pallavi Patel, if you could like introduce yourself uh, with our audience because you are uh, you just came to the session for the first time. So people will know who are you. And um, yeah, that's it. Over to you, Dr. Pallavi. Sure. Uh, good morning from New York, everyone. Happy Autism Awareness Month. And I'm privileged to be here. 
also it is an occupational therapy month so i really take pride of my own profession which really helped me to build up where i am right now and i do hear everyone talking about the awareness i just have a one word that why awareness is important not just because we need to know the definition of autism not necessarily we need to know what autism is it just if you are aware you will be able to educate someone else you will be able to help with the family who is not there yet in understanding the level of autism or what the child is doing it as a professional my job is to educate the parents and empower them so they can see where they want to see their child standing in that line like Shannon said another thing is as an OT i know our job is to work on a fine motor skills visual motor skills sensory skills what comes to teenagers we work on a few vocational skills self independent living skills but besides that i feel like working in this community for very very long time my role is to not only just teaching those skills but helping the families to find the strength and weaknesses of their own children once they find that they will well educate about those topics and they will feel empowered and they will feel connected with the child and help them to get their journey together and i really feel like there's not a one fit answer when it comes to the autism even parents emails us texts us follow me can you tell me about my child is uh, having the self stimming behaviors is mouthing is jumping hopping there is not one fit answer and there is the reason why we are here today to being um being more aware about what autism is being aware of your own child's strength and weaknesses so i'm really thankful <laughs> for Sanya Rahman's group to finding me and having me here and looking forward to have share more experience with you guys exactly dr pallavi we are looking forward to have some more session with you as well because actually uh, we need lots of professionals like you and dr samnani for our kids so this is our benefit to reach you out <laughs> thank you so much and now i'm going to hand over the session to dr samnani uh, dr samnani the session is now over to you thank you so much thank you so much uh, shazman and it, it has been wonderful uh, to have all all these people and we have been doing some programs uh, shannon you would be aware and you would be happy to know we did a program together with temple as well temple and stephen both of them and uh, yeah like we were talking uh, joan has been actually visiting to uh, to to country since some since some uh, many since few years before we lost her really we didn't had enough of her i really feel at a loss uh, and uh, like i was telling you she actually brought in a revolution in this country because autism as we know uh, is not just about training an individual or you know just developing a skill in in children it's 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 much more than that so joan was somebody who who kind of instilled that that uh, that feeling that belief that everything is not supposed to be taught to children there is so many other things that needs to be done you need to connect with children you need to make them expressive you need to make sure that they connect with you so uh, uh, shannon we would like to know from you a little more a little bit of clip we saw but i would like to know from you you being a parent of a child who has who had some difficulties were you always a media person what where does this media thing or media angle come in from uh well, thank you uh you know what's funny is that i went to school to do theater uh and i was eventually a college professor teaching acting and i was a stand up comedian for many years um so i had that background but i not not a journalistic background and not um hosting shows uh and so when i first got asked to do something to do a radio show i said what are you talking about i i i can't possibly do a radio show and i sat down and i thought well when well, i wait a second don't say no out of hand if i were going to do a radio show about autism would i have enough to say i'm a mom would i have enough to say and so it was clear that i wanted to bring in experts but i thought if i can sit down and come up with 20 ideas for different shows then maybe i should say yes 
And I sat down and I wrote over 150 ideas for shows, topics, and I thought, well, clearly I need to do this. And then uh, after I'd been doing the radio show for two years, you know, technology just got so much easier. And Dr. Doreen Grampiche came to me and said, you need to be doing this in a video format. And, and I said to her, oh, I, you need to get somebody younger and prettier. I should not be doing this. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I have a face for radio. And, and she said, no, you have a message. Uh, let's get you in front of a camera. And that was 10 years ago. So, and we still have not run out of ideas. And I keep saying someday they're gonna, you know, my days are gonna end and they're gonna be putting me in the ground. And I'm gonna say, wait, I have one more thing to say about hope for autism as they're closing me into the ground. Uh, I talk way too much. But I get excited because there's so much to get excited about. But no, I didn't have a background for this. <laughs> sure, sure. That's that's really interesting and exciting to hear hear from you. You know, you both both of you, like you and Shazmun, both of you are in my in my view, both of you are the queens of the <laughs> being a mom and a media person, right? And you have been. Uh, Shannon, your your expression, your connect with the community, the masses is is amazing. The kind of the kind of uh, voice that you have, it it simply connects with people. I have tried to watch your videos again and again, just to have have something coming in from there, some kind of a some kind of a feeling, some kind of uh, an idea coming to my mind as well. It's just the way you express yourself, even a very simple thing. Uh, kind of gets inside very, 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 very smoothly and easily. And you have been, you have been very uh, up to date about your knowledge as well. The kind of topics that you have taken up in your uh, channels, uh, it, they are uh, not just very broad topics. They have been very, very specific. Sometimes ABA, sometimes executive functions. They have been, they have been very, very specific topics as well, rather than being a general discussion and all. So, so tell tell me and tell us something about where do you get these these topics from? Where do you get well, what to do next from? Thank you for that. You know, most of the time it comes from our audience. Um, the audience will write in and ask a question, and and I think to myself, okay, we haven't covered that lately, or we haven't covered that at all. And and I'm a curious person, and I always want to know more. So I. I will say to people on the show, write your questions in and let me go to work for you to find answers. And what I do is I go look for an expert and I find these little pockets of things that I didn't know. And it gets very exciting. We bring an expert on the show to talk about whatever the question is. Um, and I learn through that with the audience. The audience teaches me and the experts teach me. And it's always my privilege. And I just want to say, you know, I... so. With both shows that I've been hosting, it's been, I think, in the 14th year of covering it. But I look at Shazman and I, what she's done in a short period of time, and I'm in awe. I mean, she's uh, she's running a really great race and helping so many people around the world. It's just a privilege to be here. And I love uh, when Dr. Uh, Sumnani, when you're, because you'll come and and join us for Autism Live, and you write in questions sometimes. Or writing comments to help people. I love having you there. So uh, it takes a village, right? We say that all the time. And I'm so privileged to be a part of all of your villages. Sure. Thank, thank you so much for, for those those comments. I, I can see, see Shazman turning completely pink when you <laughs> talked about her. But <laughs> but uh, I would I'd like to continue with you. And so uh, t tell us also about as a mom, like, you know, when we are in in countries like India, Bangladesh and neighboring countries, we feel that the the mother here is the primary focus of the whole intervention or probably caregiving. And there are a lot of challenges that probably a mother of this region only has. I would like to know from you, how has your journey of a mom has been? If you if you would like to put it in a nutshell uh, in terms of uh, community uh, coming forward, or you getting receiving support, uh, and uh, what what if at all was a was a challenge for you as a mom? 
Thank you for that question. So um, I didn't have my son until I was a little bit older. Um, I was 40, almost 41 years old when he was born and I was so excited to be a mom. And, but I was concerned, you know, before he was born, we were warned that because of my age and my husband's age that, you know, he might have challenges. And then he was born and he was perfect in every way. And I remember thinking my first thought as a new mom was we, I got away with it. I got away with it. And then, uh, you know, he was progressing normally. Um, there were a couple of warning flags that I missed that I just didn't see, but he, he was talking he, and he was making great eye contact. And I thought we had the whole world, you know, by the toe, we were just happy and, and had this wonderful, healthy child. And then something happened and my child slowly started to disappear in front of our eyes. And I didn't know about regressive autism back then. I didn't know that, it, I, I had seen things online uh, on YouTube where kids were there one day and gone the next or kids that just never developed. And those are also parts of autism, but here in the United States, over 50% of the kids have regressive autism where they go away slowly. And I used to say it was like a thief would come in in the night and steal just a little part of him so little that no one else would notice except for me. And I hear that from moms all the time. And I went to the pediatrician and the pediatrician told me I was paranoid, that he was fine, that there was nothing going on. And my, the voice inside myself said no, um, but I listened to her and he just kept going further away until eventually he was nonverbal. And I felt like I had failed as a mother and people were telling me it was my parenting. And I didn't wanna take him out. He would bite me, he would kick others, he would run away from me. If, if I put him down, he would just run and he would run into cars. So I didn't go anywhere for a while. And finally, um, somebody said to me, I think you need some help. And I listened to that person and I started down a path of trying to get help. Here in the US at that time, it, there, were, there was no insurance to cover services. And, I, and all I could think was, I can't, whatever it is they're gonna tell me, I can't afford it. And that was a very hard place to be in, but we did find services. We found luckily the best of services in the world. And my son started ABA therapy but he started other things too. We had access at school to, to speech and to OT. And even when he was three, he had access to all of that. And we were able to do an intensive behavioral intervention. And every part of it was hard for me. Every single part of it was hard for me. And I didn't realize how lucky I was that all of this was being handed to me, but the doing of it day in, day out, over and over and learning new techniques that all the ways that I had been raised to parent a child were not useful. And I had to learn new ways and I had to be willing to not be good at it. And that was really hard for me. It was so humbling. But I learned from wonderful experts. Some of them were much younger than I was. That was hard. Um, I thought, what is this 19 year old kid gonna teach me about parenting? And they saved my life. They saved my son's life. And I had to be willing to learn something new. And I had to be willing to meet my child where he was. I had all of these expectations of what parenthood was gonna look like and what who he was gonna be. And he taught me differently. He said, I'm here, I am my own person. And, I, and that he did have something to say if I was willing to work with him and be very patient. And believe me, my son has things to say. And um, we did five years of intensive behavioral intervention, 40 hours a week. And I know people hear that and they go, that's crazy. And I thought it was crazy too, but it worked. And um, it was hard. I, I don't Like I think people who uh, have kids know when you say it's hard, it's like, what words do you use? But it was hard. I cried every day. And I worried every day. I thought, how are we ever gonna live? 
what's going to become of us. And now I live every day in wonder. And my son does something every day that I go, oh my gosh, I never thought we would get here. I never thought he would be able to do this. I never thought we as a family would be able to do this, but we we, we are. And I, I want people to know that so much more is possible than what, what you may have heard. Um, and I'm looking forward to the future. Uh, but it was a lot of work for a lot of years. You know what people compare it to all the time? They'll say to me, um, it's like having a child get ready for the Olympics. You have to take a period of years, not the rest of your life, but a period of your years and say, we're going to focus on this. We're going to let other stuff go because this is more important for these years. We did five years of intensive behavioral intervention and it changed all of our worlds, all of our lives, all of our hope, all of what we knew to be true. It changed all of it. And we live every day in a world because of those five years. It wasn't forever, but like the Olympics, we got him ready. You know what I'm saying? It was great. Wow, that was that was wonderful, and that was such a such a such a wonderful, amazing story. Uh, Sh Shazmoon, would you like to share something about your your story as well? Um, actually, yeah, I, I would like to share one thing that Sharon started with. Like, uh, she wasn't that person to come to the social media, do live session. So I, I feel like, yeah, she's. Um, saying my what I want to say actually because I was very shy very like introvert uh, I can't even I even can't it's still imagine that I'm talking here so that was me but uh, my daughter she actually makes us what we are today so that's that's our achievement to have a special daughter if someone asked me like um, what your achievement I should say she changed us we, we, we don't change her she makes us uh, makes me and my husband both to different person now we think about others before we only think us about us but now we whole day whole night we just thinking what we can do better what what else we can do to make more awareness, create more awareness about autism. Because what my my experience is, uh, being an autistic mom, is very hard to adjust with the society who don't have the autistic kids, who don't have a special kids. And we felt uh, in a certain time of period, we felt, oh, we are not living in the same planet. We are coming from different planet. Their life is different. Our life is different. But now my understanding no we cannot live live our life like this we have a special daughter it's not a sin it's not a punishment that's our life it's a god give us it's nothing to do just keep carry on try to do your best what you can with your child make the life as much as you can enjoyable enjoy your life because you never know how long you will be alive in this world so live your life, enjoy your life. And uh, yes, that's, that's um, I, I was just listening to Shannon and I said, oh my God, she's just saying what I want to say, what I want to say. Thank you so much, Shannon, because it's, it makes me feel better. Yes, I'm not only the one who was like this, now doing this. So I'm getting more motivated, more encouraged to do more in future. Thank you so much, Dr. Samnani, to giving me the opportunity to express my feelings as well. Um, as can I ask Dr. Pallavi Patel, like um, Pallavi, you um, heard already Dr. what Shannon said, yeah? And uh, she is from USA. You work in USA. So my question, because some of my um, viewers, my page viewers, they are your um, patient as well. They're taking sessions with you. What did your findings actually, what the, they are thinking as a mother? Like Shannon and me, we already express ourselves. But when you deal with those mother, what their feelings, what they think about their children, a child, like why they are taking therapies? Are they want to make their child develop, make the child change, or they just want to read of the autism? So yes, I am also an evaluator in here, in New York. I am a bilingual evaluator because besides English, I speak other languages from India. 
So dealing with when we first go for evaluation, I know it's very shocking for the parents because they are not ready to hear what it will come up in evaluation results. But once first step is very hard for the parents because first for us to like convincing, it's like technically not convincing. As I said before, if you are aware, if you are educated, you can educate someone else. So our job comes to the parents like this is important. How Sam and Cher, like someone kind of guide her like, oh, you need help. That's where we as a professional comes that mommy, you need help. Family, you need help. But a lot of time I still see is the parents will feel like once they start getting the therapy, ABA, OT, PT, speech, this will be cured or this will be treated. And the common question comes, which I do understand. I mean, parenting itself is a not easy job just for even having a typical children, as we all know. And having the special need children, that makes it even more difficult. So it's very hard as a professional, we have to understand, we are not there just to tell them, your child needs therapy, your child has autism, or your child needs this. Um, a lot of time family starts the therapy in the impression that they will completely cure the autism. But once they start the therapy, once they start working us as a professional, we kind of like let them understand that we are not here to fix the autism. We're not here to treat the complete autism itself, but we are here to find a ways that how you're going to make a progress in your child's life, how you're going to make your ha living happy too, as well, dealing with children's difficulties. And we can guide them with the whole process. So most of the parents are now, as I see, they are becoming more aware. And I think it's because of all these souls and being um, just aware in the community, people talking, having other families in a neighborhood and guide, going through the neighborhoods like challenges and seeing that if the families can help each other. But it is a lot more education now. Families are accepting these therapies are important. Uh, Thank you to YouTube and Google because most of the times I'm not even parent are finding their own um, you know, sensory diet plan and everything. <laughs> so often the parents will come up and uh, will have already questions ready for us, you know, that we have this uh, concerns, but we also found that this thing will help. Is it true? And that's where we come from. We kind of like try to, you know, kind of like ease the anxiety because we want parents to enjoy their children. We don't want parents to be have this fear for the whole life that my child has an autism and it's the end of the world right we want them to be like it's okay but this is how you do it so it comes a very like that, that delicate line where you want to make the connection with the family you want the family to trust you and then you want to kind of explore your expertise so you can help uh, especially in my case i work with the younger population which we call early intervention here in new york in u.s I also work from three to five, which is a preschool age children. I also work from five and above. I also do a lot of uh, private cases for children on a spectrum of autism, which are 13 plus, because there comes my expertise to teach them the pre-vocational skills. Because once after children are 12 or 13, it's no longer working on writing skills or coloring skills. It becomes more like living of independent skills. Because as a parent, everyone has a fear what happens after this, when I'm not around. So that's a, one of the big part that you want children on an autism spectrum when they go to the adult school. You really want this, you know, to give that platform to the child. So I think, in my opinion, parents are being more aware. They are still denial in some cases, but I think if uh, we kind of, as a professional, we put it out that this is not a big problem. It's just something that we can work together and we can help you. Um, that will really help these families. Thank you so much, Dr. Pallavi. Uh, Dr. Samrani, uh, shall we go through with uh, Shannon's experience? Like, uh, shall I ask one question to Shannon or um, shall we continue? With no, no, please go ahead. And if there uh, are any questions from the uh, from the viewers, if there are any questions, if you can check if any questions on the Facebook page, then, then we can also take up. Oh, okay, sir. Uh, uh, Shannon, uh, I would like to one thing, like if you are from a different culture, like USA, yeah? but you are doing live session, you are getting so many questions because I follow your uh, live sessions and I, uh, I saw here most of the Indians, they keep questions, ask questions to your sessions. So you now know a little bit uh, Indian as well, as my understanding. But if I ask you about Bangladesh, 
like your uh, American culture, if you compare American culture, Indian culture, and Bangladesh, Bangladesh and India are similar. And uh, the way you think and the way we think as Asian, do, do, you, do you feel any difference? Like when you find out your child is different than others and when an Asian parents find that they have a child and she, is, uh, she or he is not a normal child, what like um, the, I just want to um, hear, want to like uh, ask you like, do you feel any difference about the acceptance? Like the, when they have those kids, how we accept as an American and how Asian parents accept that reality that their child is actually not a normal. And I can only go from what people tell me, you know, because the only experience I know is my own. Um, but I know that um, what I hear from around the world when I talk to caregivers and parents is that um, that there is fear, that there is fear of, of can I do this? Can I handle this as a caregiver? Um, can my child learn? Can, will the rest of the world accept my child? Will my family accept my child? Can I do what I plan to do in my life now that I have this child? Like there, there's all this fear and sometimes there's guilt because the, the world puts guilt on us. Like I said, people were telling me it was my parenting. It wasn't my parenting. It's not anybody's parenting. Um, but there's also some shame, I think, in every culture. And I think it's different whether it's the, I, I think there's a difference between moms and dads around the world and different places, different cultures place more shame. Um, I mean, we still see that there are places in the world where people think that they have to keep their child at home and not be in public with their child. And I certainly went through a small amount of that where when my child was biting me, I hid at home and because I didn't want people to look at him and think he was a monster. Um, I only wanted people to think good thoughts about him. And that meant staying at home. So I, I, don't, I don't know all of the differences, but I will tell you that what I hear from so many families from that region, especially the moms, these are moms that are like, what do I need to do? I will do whatever I need to do for my child, that they are uh, excited to teach in new ways to their children. I am always humbled, humbled by the parents who are, are willing to be open. And I see that so much um, you know, when parents will write into the show really from all over the world, but, but specifically, you know, I see there, that there, that there is, I don't want to stereotype, but there, there are a group of moms who will write in from India and I think of them as superheroes. They are, they're just willing to take it all on. Um, they will rearrange their house if they think that that's what will help their child. And I'm, I'm always in awe uh, of the spirit of what do I need to do for my child? I will do it. Strong, strong women. Um, I don't know. Did that answer your question, Shazman? Uh, yeah, yes, it is. And um, Dr. Samnane, oh, actually, we don't have any question because, um, as I mentioned before, our audience is from Bangladesh, most of them. And they're just appreciating, like um, the comments is coming is like appreciate Shannon, appreciate uh, you, appreciate Paul the B, me, my style. So, and uh, it's a language uh, issue as well. We can understand that because um, I see English. Sure. So, yeah, uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, can we like, because this is the wellness month. So can we make a, um, make a discussion like in this special month, uh, I already shared Shannon. Shannon, your journey has been like 10 years, 10 years, this uh, the social media. Do you actually uh, see any changes? Like yeah, after, like do we doing this awareness month so many years, but do you think that uh, actually it's working? The way yeah. we're doing awareness, awareness, yes. Well, since we've been in COVID, um, we've seen a lot of changes and, 
Um, you know, there are so many things that have been so hard about COVID for our community, but one of the things that it has done for us is it has forced many of us to get better at how we do things online. And so I'm seeing more resources, especially for our teen and adult community. I, I think people really stepped up and said, we cannot have these people sit at home and do nothing. And, and we've seen that for some, this format is better for them. That being able to connect with a friend in this way first, before you're face to face, it, it puts some of the sensory things to the side. So I'm thrilled with how the autism community has risen to this challenge and said, we're not stopping what we're doing. We're gonna try harder, we're gonna innovate, we're gonna find ways to teach and do social things online. And I'm excited for what they've discovered. Uh, I'm excited for, for the families who have leaned in. Some people said, I can't handle it, I can't do it. I understand that too. But for the families who have leaned in and said, I'll take a telehealth appointment or I'll try a social skills group online, those families have come back to me and said, oh my gosh, I've learned so much. Or I'll take a class with an expert of how, how do I deal with tantrums online. And I, I, think, I think we've learned a lot. And, and I think that that's really exciting. And I think that when we get back to some semblance of normalcy, that what we've learned, we're gonna take with us into this world that isn't virtual. And, and I'm excited to see that. I would also like to add a comment to what Shannon said about online. I, I completely agree and I completely uh, resonate with the autism community uh, kind of arising to the occasion and uh, using the online uh, model of uh, interventions also. I, I would in fact like to add that as a professional community, I, I um, Malvika and my team, we all are now, a lot of work has been done on the online platforms in terms of giving interventions. And this is the first time that we are also kind of connecting to the problem of the child in a real sense. Like when the child does not sit in front of the screen and the parent says, look, you can see on the camera, this is what the child is doing. You can see what he's doing now. And whatever he's doing on the sofa or on the floor or, or whatever he's doing around, moving around, that itself gives us so much of a visual information, so much of a functional information that we never had an access to before this COVID and the online model getting a little into being taken seriously, being taken as a valid way of intervention, I would say. You, you know, if before COVID, if I would have offered somebody a consultation of sensory integration with me while being in my house, I don't think they would have, they would have agreed to it at all, even for once. But now, uh, they have also realized that the kind of problems that they're looking for solutions to are need to change as well. It's not just the solution changing, but the kind of problems are now real problems. And I, I, I see that, that when I connect with parents in their environment, they, they change in their perspective of bringing up. When I ask a parent, okay, as a parent, what is your concern? It changes if I ask this question when he comes to me in the clinic and when I ask this in the online mod model, it completely changes. So one of the, one, one of the parents says, you know, I my, my child is so clingy that if I go to the washroom, he wants to come with me. I never had that question before in my clinic, but now I have it and I need to find a solution because we are as occupational therapists, we are supposed to be functional, functional and functional. And we are also defining for ourselves what functional means for parent and for the parent and the child. Now, when I see the environment around of the house, I, I have a much better visual, visual picture of I can't suggest them a swing to be put up, but I can suggest them 
probably standing on a pillow or a cushion. So I think I, I completely resonate with, uh, with what you are saying uh, in terms of social and other things for the child's benefit, because the sensory perspectives are taken care in the online. It's like preparing them without the other parameters taken care of. But I would also say that as a professional, we are also really connecting to the functional world of the child much more than before. Yes, sir. I agreed with you. Uh, I was just uh, thinking I, I should ask this question to you and you already explained to us. Thank you so much because these things need to be come forward because uh, the world, the way the world is going, we have actually no option. We have to go to online sessions with our kids. And uh, I think um, for myself, it's the best way to explore actually. If you have online option, you can go here, then you can choose you have lots of options. You can go, uh, if you have not satisfied with one service, you can go another. You can assess yourself. So this is, this is for us, uh, I think it's a more wider uh, access of service for our children. Thank you so much. Um, we nearly finished our session, but we have still nine minutes. We have one question, though it's not related to our session because it's about, um, I'm going to put the questions on the screen. Uh, does gluten-free and casein-free diet helps to reduce hyperactivity of a hyperactive child? So this type of question is common. Parents always looking for like any type of quick solution, like if they cut off their diet, if they put any, give them any medicine, uh, their child hyperactivity will be cut down. So um, uh, I should go for uh, Shannon. Because Shannon, I, I saw your live session and you have been a similar question like this so many times. So if you just give an answer to this question, Susanna Comfy Lippi. Yeah. So um, and thank you, Susanna, for asking that. Um, you know, it's it's a it's a much more complex answer than than what I can really address. But here's what I know as a parent. Um, my son has been on a gluten-free, casein-free diet since he was right after he was diagnosed. Um, but I, I, so I'm a fan of the gluten-free, casein-free diet, but I, I need to make sure and be responsible that it does. it's not helpful to everyone. Some children respond to it and some don't. <clears throat> Excuse me. But um, I think that there is potential if your child has a wheat or a milk um, or a casein allergy that it could help with some hyperactivity. Um, I think... Um, it's often the other way that when you take gluten and casein out, that you take a child out of that foggy sort of thing that children where they have a hard time focusing. And again, this isn't across the board. It's some kids, this helps and others, there's not a big effect for my son. Um, after we put him on a gluten casein free diet, what we saw was when we took the gluten out, that it was easier for him to access his language when we took, and he could focus better, when we took um, the casein, which is the thing in the milk, the protein in the milk, um, we had fewer tantrums. Um, and, you know, so that, but if you're talking about wanting to dietarily help your child with hyperactivity, I would for sure ask you to look at a couple of other things um, that, we, that we see have a correlation with hyperactivity, and that is sugar, um, if you're, if they're having a lot of sugar in their diet and the other thing is, well, there's two other things, artificial colors and flavors have been linked to, um, children just having ADHD symptoms. Um, and then the last one, which is a very big one here in the U S is limiting the amount of pesticides that go into your child's body. In 2011, there was a study that was done that showed that, um, that children who had been exposed to even a small amount of pesticides, the pesticide that was measured in their urine uh, was directly in correlation with the amount of hyperactivity that they saw in the child. Uh, there have been many more studies done since then, but for me as a parent, I read that study in 2011 and said, we've got to get the amount of pesticide in my child's body minimized. And, you know, for everybody, that means something different and it's very hard to eliminate it entirely. But I also did that as a person and I felt differently. 
Um, so is that gonna be the same for everyone? I think there always has to be a big asterisk. We're all our own ecosystems. Every person, every child on the spectrum or not are their own ecosystem. But those are, those are some of the things that we look at and say, if your child is eating healthy, it's that thing about what you put in is what comes out. So if your child is eating healthily and they're not having any allergic reaction to any of the things that they eat, then your child is gonna have an easier time focusing. They're gonna have an easier time learning. And so that's that's what we always talk about. Thank you so much, Shannon, because that's the main thing. Like um, uh, most of our, most of the parents, I should say this way, uh, we think might be if I stop certain types of foods or if I go for certain types of diet, my, my child will start talking, will stop, hyperactivity but this is not the actually the things the way you explain that's the this is the actually the uh, answer should be because food cannot make uh, make our child to space talk food can right. make our child to calm down so you can sit with them you can do the therapy then they will come out yes. so th there is a link actually but the in in between something is missing and parents cannot actually get those information. That's Can I just say this? Because, you know, I think what resonated with me when, when I was new as a parent is that somebody said to me, if I took a glass of vodka and I gave it to you and you drank vodka and then I tried to teach you physics, would we have an easier time or a harder time? And I said, you gave me, I, I can't learn physics without <laughs> sober. So if you give me vodka, I'm not gonna be able to learn physics. But we wanna put our children's best foot forward. So if we put things into them so that they can be good students, but eating broccoli or not eating broccoli is not gonna make you be able to learn physics. So I think that that's the important distinction. We wanna have the student come to the classroom in the best possible form that they can be there. And that means you know, getting good sleep, having them be healthy, not having allergic reaction. I'm a very allergic person. I'm allergic to wheat. So if I eat wheat, I'm not going to be a good student. Sometimes our kids have a wheat allergy. Sometimes they have a milk allergy. That's going to make it harder for them to be a student. But my, but not eating wheat, <clears throat> excuse me, didn't make my child talk. It made my child be in a place where he could hear words and assimilate them. So I hope that's clear. Yeah. Thank you so much, Shannon. Uh, we'll finish our session uh, in three minutes time. So I would like to Dr. Pallavi, uh, Dr. Pallavi, if you just uh, briefly say something like this awareness month and what will be your message, especially this, the way we are going at the moment, all we are based on online sessions, online discussions, online activities. So in, in th this perspectives, what will be your message for all of us? Sure. I would absolutely say to all the parents who are right now here with us or who will be watching this share link later on, do not stop your therapy just because we are in pandemic. Use the teletherapy sessions. I have almost, and I just want to let you know that the parents that you mentioned that some of my parents are here, those are all my telehealth session families that I'm working with. I have never seen those children in person because we started session just six months ago. I never meet those families. And if you ask them, and if you see them, and again, it comes to the mom. They are very, very involved mom. I have a sensory diet from them. They're implementing it. Not necessarily they will have swing at home or they will have slide at home, but we are using anything they have at home in terms of furnitures, like going under through the chairs, crawling under the table, things like that. And it's been successful. So any families who are watching here, any moms, dad, do, do not skip the tele sessions. Teletherapy sessions are very, very informative, very useful. We are able to see your children in within their own environmental context. And we are able to even provide you a better absence of the therapy sessions so you can use those activities for the functional use, not just coming to the clinic or not just going to the school and having those therapy. If they have a problem with the water, if they have a problem with the noise, we want to see that how they react to the siblings, how they react to the families. So we will be not too sure how and things will be in future or this year again with this whole COVID-19. 
But again, my message is Autism Awareness Month. Please be aware and see what's available around. Use the help. Do not wait for lockdown to get open and start the therapy because you're really, really missing out important months and the time frame for your child's development. You do not want that. Take the teletherapy sessions. Your therapist will educate you. And again, if it's something is not good fit, it's not working out, speak to the therapist and you can have ops on having another therapist. But uh, that's the only message I would like to um, provide right now with the time and situation looking at that video teletherapy are being very effective. I'm not only doing the teletherapy in New York, I have out of countries and out of state and it's been very effective. So take a step. Uh, being aware, being educated, and help others too. Thank you so much, Dr. Pallavi. Uh, Dr. Samnani, uh, conclusion, if you, and then I will go to Shannon and we'll finish the session. Thank you so much, Pallavi. Thank you so much, Shannon, for uh, agreeing, coming, coming on the show in between whatever men, millions and zillions of programs of your own that you do. Uh, <clears throat> I am very sure, uh, Shannon, that at some point of time, we have to have you here in India. It, 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 this, this can be a conference, this can be an advocacy, whatever you call it, but we have to have you. I, before the COVID, I, along with my team uh, at Soch, we loved uh, inviting people uh, from around the globe. And we used to have at least two programs in a year, either for uh, parents' empowerment, they need to connect with people face-to-face -face as, as well, uh, and listen to them, share their stories, listen to their stories, just like we did with Stephen, with Joanne, and many, many other professionals that we were, that we had invited. But it's not just about professionals. I'm sure that we want to, we would be very, very keen to have, have you here. I'm sure it, through you, we can uh, impart, we can improve the community that we want to empower. So. Uh, whenever that is, whenever that is, whenever that is going to happen, I'm, I'm very sure, Shannon, that we are going to meet at some point of time face to face here in India. I would love that. And thank you. I'd like I'd like to come and bring my son, um, because I think that when people meet my son is when people that's when the awareness really goes um, because to know him and to be able to ask him questions about what it was like for him and what it feels like for him now, I think is the single most powerful thing. So uh, I'd like to come and bring my son. So in the future, we, we will make that happen at some point when that's all, all good and all safe. And I just wanna say, as always, you know, I, it's just such a privilege to be here with all of you. When, when I first came to be a parent and to be a parent of someone on the autism spectrum, I felt a little lost. And somebody said to me, welcome to the club that you never thought you wanted to belong to. But when you get here, you're going to see that it's filled with really amazing people. And, and I found my tribe and you are all members of my tribe. And I don't know if I would have met you had I not had a child on the autism spectrum. So it is always a privilege to meet more people in my tribe um, and to serve with all of you as we serve our children. Uh, and we, we welcome them to the world and get the world ready for them, uh, which is a lot of what this month is about, not just with our community, but getting the world ready for our kids. And they should be ready for our kids because our kids are amazing. So it's been a, it's been a real privilege to be here with all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Shannon Penrod, Dr. Pallavi Patel, and Dr. Monet Samnani. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to have a lovely session like this with Shannon and Pallavi and with you. Um, thank you so much, everybody. We are finishing here today. And have a very good, uh, I think, day for USA. And... Uh, India is going to be night. So good night, sir. Uh, good day, Shannon and Pallavi. See you in future. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you.